Hey guys, it's Aiden. I'm here at Para Dressage Grade 4, where right now they're having the opening ceremony medals. And I believe it is Netherlands that is winning right now with Brazil in second and Denmark in third. Let's go. It's so amazing to see the combination between athletes and rider and horses. I mean, it's so beautiful just to see the bond that is growing between these people and their horses. Let's go take a look at what Para Dressage is all about. Power Dressage allows all eligible people with impairments to compete and achieve their goals in equestrian sports. It's the only equestrian discipline that is included in the Paralympic Games, where it's been a regular fixture since 1996. Ah. Athletes are classified according to the level of their impairment, so as to provide for meaningful competition. The competitors' mobility, strength and coordination are assessed in order to establish their classification grades. The grades range from Grade 1 for the most severely impaired to Grade 5 for the least impaired. Riders may use permitted devices to assist them, such as connecting rain bars, looped reins, and the visually impaired riders are permitted to use callers to help them navigate around the arena. All the tests are judged like a classic dressage test. In the Grade 1 tests, athletes compete movements at a walk. In Grade 2 and 3 tests, athletes compete movements at a walk and trot. In Grade 4 tests, athletes compete at walk, trot, with lateral work and canter. In Grade 5 tests, athletes compete at walk, trot and canter with lateral work. Each grade has its own series of tests, individual, team and freestyle test. At the World Equestrian Games, the individual test is ridden first and the rider from each grade with the highest score is crowned the individual world champion. The team test is then ridden. A team must include riders from a range of grades and cannot include more than two riders in any one grade. The scores from this solely determine the team medals. The team with the highest score wins. If two medals aren't enough for your trophy cabinet, then there is a chance to win another in the freestyle. This takes place on the final day of competition and is open to the eight best athletes per grade from the individual test. No scores are carried forward from the previous tests. Riders complete a set of movements set to their choice of music. The judges will score the test and the combination with the highest percentage in each grade will be crowned the freestyle world champion. Great Britain's para dressage team has the enviable record of being unbeaten in major championships. We visited their five times Paralympic equestrian champion, Natasha Baker. Competing at WEG means everything to me. It's the opportunity to compete on the world stage against the best horses and riders in the world and have that opportunity to become world champion. It's incredible. The United States have three-time Paralympian Rebecca Hart to call upon for try-on, and she knows the importance of competing in the Games. WEG is a chance to really bring parasport to the forefront uh, within the international disciplines and just prove that we are just as successful and parallel to the able-bodied sports and bringing that to the public and really getting equestrian sport out there. The feeling of standing on the podium and having that team gold medal put you around your neck, there's no other feeling like it. And we have enormous pressure on our shoulders going into any championship because as a team, we have never lost any team medal before. But finally achieving that and standing on the podium, it's, yeah, incredible. And with all of our teammates, we get on so, so well. It's fantastic. No pressure whatsoever. Um, I'm really looking forward to be able to show Parasport and highlight it here um, in my home country. It definitely adds a little bit more pressure, um, but I kind of thrive on that. I enjoy it. And then it makes everything else that much more thrilling when you um, hopefully have your dreams come to fruition. Tryon is going to be a really fantastic facility. I'm really excited. I think Mark Bellissimo has done an amazing job with his overall vision for what this facility will be. And um, getting to 
be in the George Morris Arena and have that nice stadium feel, um, I think is really beneficial to Para because it, it puts us in the limelight and gives us the great uh, international atmosphere that you are looking for when you come to a World Equestrian Games or a Paralympics. For Natasha Baker, her dream came true. Following a successful competition in Hartbury, England, she was selected to represent Great Britain in Tryon. I was inspired when I was 10 years old watching the Sydney Games. So if I can inspire one other child to go out there like I did and follow their dreams, then that's, that's like winning another gold medal to me. What a beautiful scene just watching these top three countries viewing their flags flying overhead. It's such an amazing experience. And one day I hope to be able to see that and feel that myself. But on another not so sentimental note, Nick has been learning so much about what's been going on and learning a lot of trivia. And now he is starting to quiz everybody else. <laughs> Let's take a look at what Nick has been quizzing their general public about. I've got something cool here. I've got tickets to give away. I'm going to ask a simple trivia question. Where were the last World Equestrian Games held? If they get it right, they get a choice of tickets for this week's competitions. If they get it wrong, eh -eh. Hi, what's your name? Gary. Gary, do you want to win a ticket? I do. Okay, here's the trivia question. Where were the last World Equestrian Games held? Normandy, France. Where's the heart? Ding, 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 ding. Hi, what's your name? Dawson. And how are you doing? Good. Do you want to try and win some tickets? Yes. Okay, you ready for the question? Okay, where were the last World Equestrian Games held? In France. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Oh, no. Is this like Leno on the... <laughs> no. Okay, what? What's your name? Ivy. Do you want a chance to win some tickets? Sure. Okay, here, I'm going to ask you a trivia question. Okay. okay, here you go. Where were the last World Equestrian Games held? Normandy, and I was there. Yay! Yay! <laughs> ding, 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 ding. What are you all doing? We are doing um, FBI TV. Oh! This is a show I'm... called Live at Tryon. Is it really? Yeah. I mean, is it on the website? It is. Oh, this, yeah. this one will be tomorrow. What we're doing It'll be tomorrow live. will be on tomorrow. So... Really? Yeah, you'll be on Oh, yeah, I've been watching it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to win some tickets? Sure. Okay, it's a trivia question, okay, guys? You ready? All right. Where were the last World Equestrian Games held? Spain. Yay, you win. <laughs> Woohoo! Rome. No? Uh, 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 <laughs> Dubai? You get a shot. Uh, Australia? No! <laughs> 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 it, was, it was in Norm Normandy, France. <laughs> Normandy, France. Yay! You know? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, it's a country. Do you have French lessons at school? France. Yay! <laughs> okay, are you guys ready for the question? Sure. All right. The answer first. <laughs> There's a way you can do that, but we can't show it on TV. Oh, okay. Right. So, where were the last World Equestrian Games held? France. France. Yay! Yay! All right. <laughs> there you go. Oh, sorry. And you didn't have to cheat. I didn't cheat at all. We did have an awful lot of fun doing that. Now, guys, I am in the vaulting arena where this morning's compulsory squad has just finished. And before that, I spent a lot of energy trying to stay on a plastic horse. And I'm wondering to myself, how, uh, with Hannah uh, Eccles and Hannah, why on earth do you guys, like, I was trying to spend so much energy staying on a plastic horse, and I've just watched this, and you guys are like jumping and flipping and spinning on horses. Why on earth do you want to do that? I think it's the perfect combination of everything. You have horses, you have gymnastics, and then there's this massive theatrical uh, element to it as well. And I think that's why we all love it, is the fact that it brings so much stuff together. And you compete as an individual or a team, and that's what makes it so special. These tractors are, are not doing a, t a bad no. job either. Let's just kind of squeeze out of the way this little bit, because the tractors are, might ju just uh, bump into us. But Hannah, how did this morning go? Uh, phenomenally well. The team compulsories, which got the competition underway, could not have been more exciting. Switzerland posted an astonishing score, close to eight. Germany close behind that. And then the other nations are all very close together from 
third down to seventh. So the competition has just been thrown wide open and it'll be really exciting to see what happens from now. Okay, now you know I'm new to this. So what are your top tips that I should be watching out for? I think you should watch for the amazing freestyles that we're going to see over the next few days. That People from different countries bring a different flair to the competition and everyone's going to get into the routines with different costumes, makeup, hair, and that's what makes it so exciting is the theatrical element and the crowd will go insane. I'm really looking to, forward to it. Thanks for your tips. Those are Hannah's top tips for me to watch out for. Here's some more tips. And guys, at the end, don't worry, the horses really don't do the splits. <laughs> The origins of vaulting date back to Greek and Roman times when soldiers would practice vaulting movements as part of their military training. Vaulting is a theatrical discipline in which athletes perform on the back of a cantering horse. It demands an outstanding physical condition from the vaulter, a harmonious relationship with the horse and first-class teamwork. The vaulter portrays both dance and gymnastics on horseback through a variety of exercises. The FEI World Championship vaulting is divided into four types of competition. The squad competition. Six vaulters perform movements on top of a cantering horse or being scored by judges. No more than three vaulters may be on the horse at one time. Normally, the lightest vaulter goes on top with the strongest on the bottom. The individual competition. As the name suggests, this is a solo performance involving just one vaulter, lunger and horse. Oh, no. There is no one to blame but yourself if the performance doesn't go to plan. The Pas de Deux competition. This competition involves two vaulters performing on top of the horse. To impress the judges, both athletes must appear to be in perfect harmony to gain those all-important points. As a new addition to this year's championships, there'll be a new nation's team competition. This will involve two individuals and one squad competing in the freestyle only. During a championship, the athletes must compete in three competitions. The compulsory test. Vaulters have to perform a compulsory set of movements, similar to a Grand Prix test in dressage. The technical test. Vaulters are marked on jump force, timing, suppleness, balance and strength in the technical test. Freestyle. The most creative test is left to last. Vaulters perform a choreographed freestyle to impress the judges. Those who push the boundaries with gravity-defying skills will be rewarded with the best score. The winners of each competition will be crowned FEI Vaulting World Champions. Hey guys, I am back with Briar, who happens to be the groom for Sonne Foots. I can totally see that you did a really good job, you and your and your rider. Um, could you tell me a little bit about the test? Yeah, uh, well, she had to start first, so she was a bit insecure, like, oh, normally it's not a really good thing to start, start first. Bird. But she did a really, really amazing job, and, uh, well, she won, <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah. Obviously did a very good yeah. job. <laughs> so how long have you guys uh, been partnered together? Um, well, for almost five years. Um, so I know the rider very well. She's a really good friend of mine also. And I know the horse well from the beginning uh, because she isn't riding him for that long, just a few years now. So she did Rio and then she had him for like a bit I think like eight months. <laughs> really? So, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about the horse? Um, well, he's very playful, very happy. <laughs> um, well, he's always happy. So we were very, very happy that he traveled safe uh, and that he's so energetic here. He seems so calm and nice and completely delightful and enjoying all of this attention. Could you tell me a little bit about what entails the grade four? What is the, uh, the requirements for the disabilities? Um, oh, what do you mean exactly? Like, um, what kind of disabilities are you having in a grade four? Like, how is it graded ah, from well, one to five? Well, it's very different, really. Um, like, Sana, she, um, well, and she had an accident. Mm -hmm. So, um, there are several things. So, yeah. It's, it's hard to tell, really. Yeah. So, it's up to uh, medical tests. And... Okay they place you in a grade um, so yeah it can be like you're missing a few fingers or maybe missing a whole leg or yeah <laughs> for, still for me it's hard to tell so yeah well uh, hopefully we'll be getting a little bit more educated at this show but thanks so much for joining me and you too congratulations you did such a good job too. oh he wants to eat my mic I'm sorry you can't do that 
this is what you get when working with live horses. But Nick doesn't know anything about that because yesterday I made him get on a mechanical horse and had a lesson. So we definitely got a little bit of entertainment value out of that. So enjoy seeing Nick ride a robotic horse. <laughs>so they're not letting me on a real horse this is the next best thing the horse simulator and aiden and barbara from the horse simulator center here are gonna get me going guys because uh this is gonna be a completely new experience get ready to chuckle a little bit um a little? let's go for it okay set me up we teach us riders to be precise with their legs to learn that when i put my leg here i get the green light there okay and it's always the same place you see the fear in his eyes already. This isn't fair. This isn't the best way for you know you to learn because I want to put you on a real horse where there's real fear. <laughs> so you get bolted off. Yeah. And if you try to be stronger than the horse, I think I know who's going to lose that fight, right? So you always try to be his partner and you try to dance with the horse. All right. So no legs. <laughs> no legs. Medium walk. Right Extended walk, collect yeah, a trot. <laughs> Do not put them on again because you're gonna have trouble. Now. He's going fast real quick. Does he not look like a prince charming? He looks like a prince charming on a horse. Like I need to give him a sword that he's gonna draw up and just save some damsel in some tower. Don't run into a tree. <laughs> Taking him through the trees. It's pretty cool. Yeah? I like this. <laughs> Perfect. Very good, yeah? <sighs> Nick is doing something good again. I... Why does he have to be good at everything? I'm with two of the six uh, members of the Swiss team who are leading at the moment. And guys, how was your run this morning? Oh, it was amazing. We were just like, everybody gave his best and it was perfect. What can you expect from tomorrow? We are looking forward to our freestyle tomorrow. Awesome. Okay, guys, I know you're in a bit of a rush, so I'll let you go. Thanks ever so much for joining us. Thank you. Okay, Bye. good luck tomorrow. Bye. Okay, guys, uh, just a reminder that this show is completely interactive, so get in touch with us on social media. We have had a few people get in touch with us so far, and thanks to all who have gotten involved. Now, our first one is from Jennifer Saunders, the Jennifer Saunders. She's congratulating uh, Roz Cantor on their win, on her win. And then Paul Nolan congratulating the Irish eventing. Um, Adrian Osborne with Great Britain. Not, he's not actually crying, I don't think, or she. Um, Rich uh, and um, him on his morning walk. And then um, Fox Pit eventing GB, just brilliant. And then Swift, uh, Smith. Uh, equine media uh, wishing all of the athletes and horses good luck um, we have had a couple of questions come in so far um, and this is a cool one because I didn't know this one of the questions that came in is why are the French riders wearing military some of the French riders wearing military uniforms and that's actually because they're in the military so they get the right to wear their military uniforms I think that's pretty cool Guys, don't forget to stay in touch with us at hashtag B1 and hashtag Tryon2018. Send us your tweets, send us your pictures. We're getting a lot of these and these, um, but just get in touch with us some, with some more questions and, uh, and we'll try our best to, uh, to get back to you. Now, guys, the jumpers have moved in. The Grand Prix dressage have moved out. But before they did, we managed to catch up with riders from Germany, Sweden and Spain in this TikTok magic moment. Patrick Kittle. Hello, and I'm Sönke Rotenberger. Well, we are here to ride the dressage at the World Equestrian Games. Sönke took a gold medal, so top sport. Yeah, we're, as you already said, at the World Equestrian Games and uh, doing dressage uh, with our horses and having lots of fun here. This is the fanciest place I've ever done this autogram signing. It's so cool that people come in, a lot of kids asking stuff, wanting to know, you know, how it's a bit behind the, the curtains in the sport, and that's what I love. 
Yeah, it's nice to get this opportunity to talk to the fans and listen uh, to what they thought of the two tests we've already performed and also to get the feedback that they will support us. Uh, maybe Sönk has the best signature, but I have a smiley still, so I think we, we, you know, we put it out equally. So we're coming to the end of the dressage portion of the World Equestrian Games. For me, it's a little bit sad because it's my favorite sport and I, you know, I was really excited to see everybody compete and it's been a little bit nostalgic about all of my favorites coming to an end. So I have here with me Juan Matute and we have Quantico. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're doing good. A little bit upset as well. A little bit sad. It's the final countdown, like you said. We're getting picked up in not so long and uh, yeah, T minus one hour more or less. So the, how was your ride? Yeah, it went, it went well. I think we stayed consistent with our scores throughout the season. Um, being here is already a huge success. I'm very proud to be able to represent my country. And uh, I'm very proud, pleased and thankful for all of the support and for the amount of learning I get to get to have from, from this amazing horse. He's taught me along. This along, is your, along first, along your first World of Kaiser Games, yeah? First week, yes. So what are you planning on doing after? So right now we're planning on giving uh, Quantico a break. I think he deserved it. It's been a really long season. We live in Wellington throughout the winter, so since January pretty much he's been going. And uh, yeah, he's been performing really, really well. And I think it's, it's, <laughs> it's about time that now he can have a few weeks off, uh, spend some time in the paddock, um, really just, you know, light training. And then so that they can recuperate not only physically, but also psychologically, you know, because at the end of the day, even though they are used to the competition world, uh, it is a little bit stressful. It's new, new places. New You're traveling very far too. It's flying to Liege uh, this, this evening or tomorrow morning. I'm actually not entirely sure. I know they leave in about an hour to the airport. And, uh, and then from there, they, they travel down to Spain, to Madrid. That's where I'm based. Oh. Hi. Let me show you something really quickly. He unfortunately, on the trip uh, to try on, smacked his face. So we call him now, the nickname of the week is Harry Potter. So for your first World Equestrian Games, what was your favorite part of the entire event? Well, sharing the arena with some of my idols since I was very little is, is a very special feeling. Uh, getting to compete in the same arena as, as yeah, some of the very best of the world is, is amazing and it's a thrill. Totally breaks my heart to say goodbye to you guys and I hope you guys have a super trip home. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining Thank me. Thank you very much. Thank you. And goodbye, thanks, Quantico. Quantico. Perfect time just to say goodbye. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, guys. It is hot in here. Like, I'm glad we have these things because they're good for dabbing. Um, guys, Great Britain boomed onto the metal scene yesterday. Let's have a look at the metal table right now. Yesterday, GB climbed to, uh, onto the table with two gold medals in the eventing. The individual won by Roz Cantor. And then Ireland broke records and got onto the metal board uh, with McCarthy and... Uh, his horse, Mr. Chunky, I think maybe the production manager put that in because this waistcoat is actually holding in chunk. So that's the metal table as it stands. Aiden, over to you. Be like the business face. Well, that was an amazing time seeing all of the medals given out. So many happy countries. But now, Nick has definitely caught the horse bug. And since he doesn't exactly know how to ride very well, he's going to go and do the backwards way and buy a saddle first before the horse. Let's check out what Nick has decided to buy. I heard an awful lot of the, the word tack. Uh, and I understand it's everything that the horse wears. But you know what? i got to look after this tushy, so I'm concerned about a saddle right now. And I'm with Katie from Voltaire Saddles. Um, Katie, can you tell me uh, a little bit about your saddle ranges? Absolutely. So we have a full range of saddles available for every type of horse and rider. Um, we have dressage, we have jump saddles, mono flap, deep seat, half deep seat. Whatever you need to suit you and your horse, we have it. If we're working with a uh, hunter-based rider, we're going to want something that's going to allow them to get light in their seat out of the tack um, so they can let the horse do the job. Whereas with something with an eventer, you know, cross-country saddle, you need something that's going to secure that rider down, allow them to be comfortable over that long-distance course. Um, and for the more novice rider, maybe something a little bit deeper, something with a little bit of Velcro. So every rider needs something a little bit different, and we have that. What about the materials that are used? They're not just leather, are they? Nope. Nope. So 
within the saddle you have what's called the tree. The tree is a skeleton of the saddle. Um, we have a couple different styles. We have a uh, polyurethane tree, a composite, um, and then all of these saddles here are a wooden tree. So you're going to get a lot of organic flex, um, and then they're secured with uh, the highest quality steel available, so they're very strong. We're going to need strong, because yes. I, I, I weigh a bit. Um, <laughs> but let's say I really like eventing. Uh, what kind of saddle would you put me in? Absolutely the Lexington mono flap, without a doubt. That sounds good. Let's try it out. The Lexington in particular features a half deep seat uh, and a narrow twist. So the, what that means is it's going to be very close contact. So you're going to be able to feel your horse. Um, you're going to be able to communicate very well. Um, and then we have the exterior blocks. So they're very secure. And the mono flap is going to give you the most amount of contact that a saddle gives because you have less leather beneath your leg. Okay, how do I get on it? Mount away. Ready? Here we go. Uh, uh. It's actually not that easy for my <laughs> hips. <laughs> All right. When we're fitting you for your saddle, there's three major things we're looking for. Of course, seat size. So we want about a hand's width behind you when you're sitting in the saddle. So that's going to position you well. Uh, and then from here, flat forwardness. For us, we get very specific with our flat forward. Four different styles of flap in the forwardness, so we can really match the angle of your thigh, give you that added security. And then with the Lexington, we want about a third of the flap to rest beneath your leg. So you're going to get security, but you're also going to get the contact that you need with your horse. So I'm ready. What do I need next? You need to walk away with a new saddle. What about a horse? Uh, we can go there next. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely, thank you. Now all Nick needs to do is get a horse, but maybe he should start with something maybe a little bit smaller, let's say a pony. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna give you guys tomorrow's timetable for the 19th of September. Team jumping is gonna be starting at 8.50 EDT, individual vaulting at 9.20, and para dressage at 9.25. Now on to Nick to say goodbye. Thanks ever so much for joining us, guys. But right before we go, I've got a champion up here. Do you want to have a quick word? Yeah, you can come up here. What do you mean, come up there? Here. Uh, okay, then. Okay. okay. You ready? Yeah. Uh, making me work for an there interview. Joanna Eccles, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How did, are you? Did you enjoy this morning? Oh, it was fab. Yeah, really exciting. What can we expect from the rest of the competition? Uh, much more excitement. I think there's going to be changes at the leaderboard as soon as tomorrow kicks in and it's the freestyle. It's just going to be spectacular. So okay. much excitement. Please don't make me jump up on anything. <laughs> this is hard enough as it is. Guys, thanks ever so much for joining us here at Live and Try. And don't forget to get in touch with us with hashtag B1 and hashtag Try on 2018. Join us tomorrow live at Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.